Everybody keying on him. They hit him with the reverse early. This time they go right back to number two. And it takes three guys to bring him down finally for the Chargers after a pickup of three yards. One guy we haven't talked about yet is tight end Foy Wilson, 6'4", 225-pound senior, number 14, a big blocker for Laster throughout the season. They'll move him around. As you see the big fella, a terrific all-around athlete. And keep an eye on him, the senior. See if they don't start running behind him as this game moves along. So another third down, third and four. Can the Charger defense step up and make a stand? Laster's going to come out in motion, line up wide. Play action, a flag on the play. They get it to Laster, tries to make a move. He's not going to make it to the sticks. Andre Davis there waiting on him. Well, they're feeding him in the backfield, trying to feed him out there through the air. Good open field tackle by Davis. There's no flag on the play. So what do you do here, Brady? Fourth down, you send in. I think you punt it and try to get field position back in your favor. So Charlie's gonna do just that, sends his punting unit in and try to work some field position early on in this first quarter. Tissy Robinson will handle the punting and kicking duties. Long snapper Ty Johnson. Here for the Graceville Tigers, deep to receive, Art Evans. Offense, defense, special teams. So another whistle, why not? Tissy Robinson, how about this guy, the, the punter for Graceville. From a military family and grew up in Germany, played a lot of soccer. Will Holly told him, okay, you can kick this year, but you're playing a position. <laughs> they don't have enough guys, you know? They need him to do a little bit more than just kick, but he's done a good job for Will Holly and these Graceville Tigers this year, trying to boot it down there to Art Evans and give his team some better position here on the field. What do you say we go check in with Kim Anthony for the first time today? Graceville is a small town of about 2,400 people, and they really rally to support this football team. In fact, they love this team so much that at midnight, they hopped on four buses like this one to drive 10 hours to support their team. And get this, right after the game, they'll turn right back around and drive another 10 hours. And that's what I call fan support. James, Brady? That all night long driving, hopefully, for those Graceville fans who won't be driving and crying on the way back, but having them crying right now is Dominique Booker running just as strong as Laster is over there in the black jersey. Comes churning through there for a big pickup on the first down. A lot of movies and a lot of sandwiches on that bus ride. Wonder if any of those movies will have any stunts done by Kim Anthony. <laughs> you know, that's what she's, she's been, a stunt woman. And there's some of those fans that came down all the way from Graceville. Not yeah. a lot of sleep over there, but... Well, that's why you wear the hat, because yeah. you got the bed head. You got you to plan ahead. That's the, one of the great stories in, in, in Florida high school football, seeing these schools and their fans and the communities rally around there. Balls on the ground. Andre Davis had it on the pitch, was hit hard in the backfield. Ball came squirting out. Evangel Christian's going to pick this one back up. So a second down, but a close call there. And down on the ground is... One of the Tigers coming right at you. you know, he's going to dip it up inside. And as he turns in, doesn't hang on to the football. And a very favorable hop right there at the bottom of the pile for Vangel Christian. A break for them early on. These guys really got to hold on to the football. I mentioned at the top, Graceville wanting to cause turnovers, have caused 34 turnovers on the season. Trying to hit it and get it. And we're trying to get a hit on Tim McGuire right now. That front four for the Graceville Tigers putting the pressure there. Ball goes incomplete on second down and three. So bring up a third down and short now. Good push up front. McGuire very wise to throw it away and live to see another day as that Graceville defensive line teeing off and conditioning could be a major factor today. Got great weather, obviously, but you get so excited early in the game that sometimes you zap some of your energy. You got to calm down and play on an even keel, especially when you're playing both ways as many of these guys are. So right at midfield, 
McGuire, oh, and an offsides, jumping offsides in the backfield is the fullback. And he lost the ball. The whistle came in there late. Don't know if that play ever, they let it get started. Well, the yellow flag has certainly been the highlight of the first quarter. Yep. Yeah. Legal motion on the, on the offense. offense. It is declined. First down ball. What a break right there for Will Holly and his team as Graceville will get it back. As I told you, they, the turnovers are a big thing of what they do. He preaches that, and that looked like a miscommunication that time, though. Not so much what Graceville did, but maybe the lack of execution by Evangel Christian. Well, Evangel Christian, two plays on that drive. They put the ball down on the ground, and the second one is costly on third down. So a first down now at midfield for Lee Steverson in the Graceville Tiger offense, trailing six to nothing here in the 1B state title game. And J.J. Laster, the workhorse, keeps on working and gets up there near the first down marker. It's going to be close. Well, he's a tough runner, and, you know, great running backs usually have strong lower bodies and run with their, their hips and their knees and drive their legs. And sometimes not being very tall is an advantage. And Laster, uh, although only 5'7", just a sophomore, stays low to the ground, good pad level, good lean. His coaches tell me that he always goes forward. So a second down and one now for the Tigers. Back to Laster they go. Boy, is he hit hard right there about the line of scrimmage by the Chargers. Jeffrey Wells in there. Nate DeLon. No gain. No gain. That'll bring up a third down and one. J.J. Laster has worked so hard in that first quarter, and you got to believe there's going to be a whole lot more of him here in the next three quarters of this 1B state title game, the 2005 FHSA football finals on Sun Sports. Big hits and big plays all across the field. It's six to nothing, though. Evangel Christian will be back. We'll call a timeout. And Bring J.J. Laster over to the sidelines. 104 yards on 15 rushes already. 8.37 left to go in this second quarter. Workhorse. <laughs> I'll say that's a workhorse. The sophomore running back. And, and, and let's break that down for a second. Like I was telling you earlier about Neil Anderson, mm -hmm. a four-time All-Pro NFL football player. Chicago Bears had an outstanding career, outstanding career there with the Florida Gators. And to say that somebody is the best athlete he's ever seen, that means something. You know, I mean, we can see a few athletes in our day, but for Neil Anderson to say it, that, that's, that's quite a compliment for that Laster family. And, and to talk about the girls who were there in school, just blazing past all the guys. And Neil Anderson spoke to this football team, the Graceville Tigers. They, they made their way down to Ocala Vanguard, a place where Will Holly used to be an assistant coach. And on their way down, they had a walk through there, and Neil Anderson came and talked to him. And the one thing that he was very impressed with it and made him so proud of this team is is the way that they showed respect to all the adults that were around there the way they looked everybody in the eye and it made him more proud than anything he'll ever do on the football field good to hear about this team and good for this community trying to put it in the end zone now jj lasher's going to take the pitch into the end zone and there are the first points on the board for the guys wearing the black jerseys at the hands of jj laster behind that big offensive line good hole for him yeah, and he can thank his fullback too number 40 jj henderson the big senior with a pancake block out on the flank Made it clear sailing for J.J. Laster into the end zone, and Graceville right back in it here midway through the second quarter. Watch his fullback out there on the edge. They kind of put him out there as a wingback, and number 40, bam, blows the defensive back out of there. Easy hole, good blocking up front. Graceville on the board. Boy, Wilson put Dominique Booker on his back in the end zone to open up that hole. You talked about him earlier. Big, strong guy up front. There's Tissy Robinson, the junior, putting it through there. Just like he used to do it with the soccer ball in Germany. If we can see the, the big tight end, and Lasser's going to follow up in there. He gets two blocks, one by Wilson and one by Henderson, and look at him. Right up in there. Too easy. That's probably one of his easier runs today for Laster, and he knows what to do with it. Toss the ball the official, act like you've been there before, and take your points. The little big man from Graceville, Florida. You know, that used to be called the biggest little town in professional baseball. They had a professional baseball team there, 1952 to 1958. The Graceville Oilers, the Alabama-Florida League, Deep South Class D baseball. 
population was only 1,658. But they had themselves a baseball team and followed them for quite some time. And they're following them down here, the state title game, all the way down south to Miami, Florida, where they've gotten on the board, five plays, 70 yard drive capped off by that big Laster five-yard touchdown run. That's such a great low center of gravity, and you can stay down low and find your way through the defense. Good things can happen for you at the running back position, and those guys got to get their Gatorade while they can because most of them are going right back out on the field. Tissy Robinson trying to get this one off, but the football falls down on the field. Big six-foot, three, 165-pound kicker. I mean, you see why Will Holly says to him, look, all right, you got a year to kick, but we need you playing a position next year. I'd like to throw him a, a few footballs. Lee Steverson's going to be around for a couple more years, a sophomore quarterback. We've seen J.J. Laster in there at quarterback a few times and running the show on the other side, going to get his hands back on the ball now here in the second quarter. Tim McGuire, this one stays on the tee, and it kicked off by Tissett. Almost to the end zone, taking it. The one is Art Evans. Art Evans just gliding, trying to find something to do, and he finally decides exactly what to do with it. Turns the corner, outruns everybody to the corner, including Montrez Bullock. How about that speed? Yeah, he comes in here. He has a 95-yard touchdown reception on the season, and he's just a terrific player, and Coach Dodge has got him for another year. You talk about Evangel Christian a week ago, and they won have consecutive wins on number three and number four in the state. A week ago, five different guys found the end zone for the Chargers. Trying to prove something. Smallest team there in Polk County, Evangel Christian Chargers. They oh hit hard. Dominique Booker, that's two plays in a row that he's been hit hard. Hit hard on defense earlier by Foy Wilson. Down by number 40, J.J. Henderson. J.J. Henderson there, bringing him down from his defensive end spot. Both teams like to run the football, and, and obviously that's what we've seen success on, on both sides of the ball, or both sidelines. They've been able to run the football. Who can make the big plays in the passing game may determine the winner. So second down and nine now for the Charger offense. Put it on the ground. Last time they were out there, Art Evans. He takes it, knows what to do with it. Gets across the 50-yard line, out running everybody down the sideline. Slipped on the sidelines. Does he stay in? They're calling him out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. Wow. He decides to turn on the Jets and look out. And this is what Coach Holly was talking about with his pass defense. Not so much down the field, but being able to tackle a guy of this ability in the open field. And very simple play, and then you, you run the screen play, release your back out there, try to block the corner, give you a little bit of a block. Good job by him out there on the on the edge, and he turns it up and knows what to do with it. Good job by Jamie King getting out there, kicking out the corner. And that fella right there, Art Evans, he knows what to do with it when the ball's in his hand. Well, Chris Moore, the sophomore linebacker we talked about in the open, running him down and maybe saving a touchdown. Dominique Booker will take this one. Little gain, they're calling it down. Ball came out. Calling it down, gonna run that clock. So Graceville thought they had another big opportunity, big turnover, Lauren Johnson down there. Booker having a trouble hanging on to the football today. Now, I told you Graceville, they'll, they'll turn you over, but in this game, they're using two different footballs, or they, they got two footballs to warm up with before the game. Uh, they didn't use their own balls, but their actual FHSA state finals footballs. So maybe he's not as comfortable with those as his normal ball back in Andrew Christian. Jamie King trying to get outside, but can't get there. About six black jerseys waiting on him, leading the charge. Jamie Foy King, Wilson from his defensive end spot. There's my man, Chris Moore. Foy Wilson and number five, what a great John story. Lester. I mean, take size out of it. It's not the size of the man in the fight, but the Side of the size of the fight in the man, and that man right there has got a lot of fight. Young man, enough fight to get him 117 tackles this year coming into the game. 13 tackles for loss, one sack. And Will Hawley said, "Hey, when you see my middle linebacker, you're going to say, what's this kid doing out there?' But he's our leading tackler, and he's made two big plays there for the Tigers on this drive. Trying to get another one. Ball goes down on the ground. 
And this one is picked up by the Graceville Tigers. Looked like Darnell Laster fell on it. He did, and the Tigers are back in business. Once again, a execution problem from the quarterback to the running back. I believe it was Andre Davis who put it on the ground, and McGuire having trouble getting the ball in the pocket. Let's see if we can see it on the replay. He's got it good right there. Nope, that's on Andre Davis. The running back gives the wrong pocket. You got to have your inside arm up, your right arm up, and Andre Davis had his left arm up, and that's it right there. Watch him. See how he has his arm in the wrong position. He never gets the handoff, and that's not the kind of fundamentals Coach Dodge coaches. So trailing 13 to 7, Steverson and company going to get another shot at it. Wide open down the field. Can't get turned. Brandon Wilson had to turn around and come back to it. Nobody around him. Brody uh, Bullock, the closest guy, and he was about 15 yards behind him at his safety position. He's going to release two receivers down the middle of the field. The safety's got to decide which way to go. He gets him turned around, Bullock, and he's got him wide open. And McGuire just couldn't get it to him, and that would have been a big play. Good play call, though. Challenge the safeties. Back them up. Loosen up for you on the run. McGuire gets another opportunity like that. He'd like to get it back and see if he can execute it. Yes, sir. That's a, that's a situation where you throw the visor if you learn your football from Coach Spurrier. Churning across down to midfield is J.J. Laster. So if you can't get it done through the air, you come back to your workhorse, J.J. Laster, and he'll take you up to midfield. So with just under six minutes now and trailing by six points, the Tigers are running hard. Jock Dumont on the tackle. Inside base play again. Look at him get sideways in the hole to find some room in there and then going forward like he always does. J.J. Laster, the workhorse in this first half, and I really believe that is set up off the, off the pass play for first down. I think they've got a nice mix going right now in the Graceville offense. First and 10 from midfield, Steverson, oh, tried to get it out to Laster who falls down and that one's gonna be picked off and taken back, R.B. Mackey. Mackey for the end zone, touchdown. Look what I found right in the bread basket. 45 yard interception return for a touchdown in the state title game for the linebacker, the junior, number 32, R.B. Mackey. J.J. Laster just fell to the turf. Boy, R.B. Mackey really turned the Jets on when he got it, the beneficiary of a ill-advised throw by, Mag by Steverson. And, uh, you know, this turf, you know, these kids don't play on it all the time, and they don't play on it at all hardly on the Astro play, and you got to keep your feet underneath you. Most guys wearing cleats, this is not the type of turf you wear tennis shoes on, but you got to gather yourself. It cost them six. Make that seven. Tyler Donaway puts it through. So 20 to seven now. The big lead for the Evangel Christian Chargers. And R.B. Mack got himself a touchdown. Making that difference. We'll be back. Stadium here in Miami, Florida. 20 to seven lead for the Chargers over the Graceville Tigers. Tyler Donaway kicks one more off. And Brandon Wilson's gonna pick this one up and bring it out across the 20 yard line. That's where the Brandon Graceville Wilson Tigers will start this return. show. Last time they had the football, though, J.J. Laster, who's worked so hard in that backfield, down fell down, and going the other line. way was R.B. Mackey, the junior First linebacker. 10, Graceville at the 22. Well, after Graceville, obviously, the, the penalties and the turnovers kind of hurt you so far early in this game, but no reason to think you can't go right down the field to try to get a score before the half and make it a one-score game. Just got to cut down the mistakes and focus. And the backs, obviously, on this surface have really got to stay within themselves, get their feet underneath them, and, and make their cuts. Make their cuts and hold on to that football. Ball's been on the ground quite a bit here today. On the ground is J.J. Laster. Big defensive play by the Chargers. And there's been a whole lot of defense by that Charger defense in the white shirts. Yeah, outstanding defense early on. And uh, there you'll see the big play in the secondary by Art Evans, and then the interception by Bullock. He's going to take it down and set turn the field position. And here's another one. Two turnovers and a big play from this defense. They, they haven't been able to control J.J. Laster, but they've been able to make him go the distance. And that's what he's got his yards, but they've had field position and turnovers in their favor. A lot of big plays for the Chargers. And here's another big play. Number five, Darnell, Darnell Laster, Laster carry. By number 77, Jonathan. 77, Jonathan Levins there bringing him down to the turf, but 
third down and long here, but they've been able to move the ball against this Charger defense for the most part, have the Graceville Tigers. They're just 20 to seven though. If you're Will Holly and that Graceville bunch, you'd like to go down and answer with 420 left to go in this first half. Going a little bit closer to halftime. Big third down play here. Plenty of time for Steverson. He'll go outside and try to find Foy. Foy Wilson, the tight end, was out there but couldn't connect. Flag on the play. Rick. Like a little bit of confusion there for a while. Wasn't sure they, they got the playoff. A couple guys stopped. Finally, Steverson went running with it. Well, originally he was looking for the slant route to Martrez Bullock, but that time Evangel Christian dropped seven guys into coverage. No one on third long. They just rushed four. They, normally they like to bring some, some heat. They dropped seven guys into coverage, and because of that, nowhere to go for Steverson. Tried to make a play, but couldn't do it. And that's what's so tough when everything's predicated on the run that your passing game, you got one or two receiver routes, hard to find guys. So, wow, talk about a big penalty. Oh. So getting the first down via the penalty of the Graceville Tigers, they're going to stay alive here. And now 4.04 left to go here before halftime. And a breath of fresh air for Lee Steverson. Anderson in motion. This one goes to the other J.J. back there in the backfield, J.J. Laster. Not much of a game. One thing that Graceville likes to do is, is take their fullback, J.J. Henderson, and move him to an H-back position, basically. So he's not, he's not, you know, in front on the eye, but maybe move him offset one way or the other and then follow behind him and their big tight end. And they've had a lot of success with that early on with the big number 40 leading the way. Second down and nine now. Graceville Tiger bunch, Evangel Christian, Charging hard, that's Brandon Wilson's gonna keep that one, go around the edge. Wrestled down, good looking open field tackle there. Number five, Dominique Booker. Now Booker with a great play, that could've been a huge play for Graceville and Booker coming up from the defensive back spot. will find him, there you see him coming across right there. Open field tackle, if he doesn't make that tackle, there's a lot of real estate out in front of number three, Brandon Wilson. Well, we've shown you some offensive numbers for Mr. Dominique Booker. How about some on the defensive side of the ball? 93 tackles. Two times second to quarterback this season. That's a pretty good open field tackle there, though. And here comes a big third down play. Laster's going to throw it to Foy Wilson. First down across the 50 to the 45. And just when you think that it's going to turn over it to the other side, and they, they've come to an end, they keep the drives going. Very impressive. Graceville not giving up. They haven't given up throughout the season. And here's a good look at it. They're bringing the blitz, and he just releases the tight end down the field. J.J. Lester can do it all. He can quarterback. He can run it. He can throw it. Watch him right here. Take the toss sweep. Get his hands on the laces. Make the big completion to his tight end, Foy Wilson. First down, Graceville. So 229, the way they keep it on the ground. Time becoming a little bit of a factor, not when you pick up that much yardage. And a big first down pickup, doing it through the air with the arm, doing it with the legs. Brody Bullock finally wrestling him down, down inside the 30 yard line. Kid has a lot of fun playing. You can see him smiling, asking for the, the football. He wants it more, he's gonna go inside now. He goes outside, he goes inside. He just look at him, create space as he's running. and. Up the field, another positive play, and Graceville back in the scoring zone, a chance to maybe put some points up here before the end of the half. That one, a 17-yard pickup of those 143 yards here in the first half, 20 rushes. When you're a sophomore, you can do that. You, know, you get to be a senior, you get a little old and tired like us. They're going to take a break, and we're going to take one, too. Finish off this first half. Have some halftime action for you when we come back. But first things first, let's see if they can get in the end zone. We'll be right back with Dedrick Dodge, Will Holly, and their bunch. In all the world, there are a select few who, at their very core, are capable of incredible training.
before they head into halftime. 2.21 left to go, and Steverson's going to throw this one up. Complete to Montrez Bullock, and Bullock makes a move, gets outside, got a blocker, gets down to the five-yard line, inside, down to the three-yard line, they're going to call him, where he steps out of bounds. Huge pickup after the timeout. This is a great play by Steverson. Nothing down on his first read, so it breaks down. He just flips it out to Bullock, and then he makes a break play, getting out to the outside and showing great effort and want to inside the five-yard line. Graceville's got something cooking. You see Steverson pointing at his receiver. Um, great play, but he made that play when the first read wasn't there. Bought some time, stayed behind the line of scrimmage, allowed him to come open. Now they'll try to finish it off from the two. Second goal, and it goes to number two. Number two's got two guys waiting on him, though. Jamie King, the running back and linebacker. Sophomore, 97 tackles this year. There's a big hit there at the line of scrimmage, just waiting on Laster. Certainly time is not at a premium now when you're this close. You gotta find a way to bang it in. Laster's been the workhorse. Maybe they'll try something else down here in the scoring zone. Laster one more time, this time it works. Touchdown, J.J. Laster. Six more points on the board for the Graceville Tigers as they try to chip away at that lead before they go into the locker room and doing just that. 20 to 13 now with 131 left. Good job in the interior part of that offensive line. The big ugly is working in there. Ty Johnson, the center, creating a, just enough room in there with a little scoop block. Ryan Ward, Dustin Evans, the three inside guys just getting enough push inside, scooping inside, getting low, and allowing Laster to get into the end zone. Tissy Robinson trying to make this a six-point game. Looked like a couple guys in white jerseys came across early. Jock Dumond over there at the defensive end spot. On a, de on a defense, half the distance. Half the distance. Repeat, try one thing you'll find out with both these programs, a lot of resolve, Batesy. They're not just going to go away. Dead ball, decroachment. I don't think they've declined. Tissy right. Robbins says, I'll take it where I got it. Let me just put it through there. Yeah, two scores. Uh, these teams have both sized up with some very good competition this season. Both teams battle-tested for this championship run. I'll get the number for you. And Tissy Robinson puts it through. And where it all started. So we do have a six point game now with 131 left to go in this first half. First half. Dedrick Dodge 20, played a lot of great football, wears two Super Bowl rings. He's got one of them, the 1997 Super Bowl ring, his championship season with the Denver Broncos, defensive back at Florida State University. How special would it be for him to get a state championship football ring here in the state of Florida, not too far from his hometown? Went to Mulberry High School down south of Lakeland. Very special to take home a state championship ring, trying to get his troops rallied and try to go down there and answer before they go in. They've had some big plays so far in the first half. Really have, and uh, you know, they've gotten turnovers and been the beneficiary of some help from Graysville creating those turnovers, but you gotta give it up for the Tigers as well, answering, getting down two scores late in the first half and, and answering with a huge drive and a huge third down pickup against Coach Dodge's defense. And that defense, let me tell you, a week ago, Cedric Epps, one of the top rushers in all the state of Florida from Jupiter Christian, they just shut him down. So that's an awfully good defense that J.J. Laster is having a big day against. So Tissy Robinson is going to get another shot to put this one down. Art Evans, Dominique Booker back there deep to receive. Not going to get that far, but... Booker's going to step up and take it. Last time he touched it, he had a big return, and he's got a hole there in the middle before he's brought down. Art Evans, the Shark. Shark probably feels pretty comfortable down here in Miami, Florida. His teammates put a nickname on him. The Shark. I don't expect Coach Dodge to sit on it. He's a pretty aggressive guy, and, uh, you know, obviously with that running game, anything can pop out of there. But the way they've struggled holding on to the football, he might want to go to the air. Tim McGuire, he's got a quarterback that he feels can throw it. A, a transfer from Newsom. He ran the wing key there. He doesn't like calling his, any quarterbacks an option quarterback. So he's a quarterback. If he can run it, he can run it. He can be an athlete, but he's not an option quarterback. And they're going to put it on the ground here. 
Spread them out with a four wide formation. Try to hit the quick trap with Booker. See if they can get something big going. Always a good play late in the half when teams are in prevent if you're going to run the ball. Uh, a trap play because the guys are trying to get up the field thinking you're going to throw the football and sometimes you can pop one out of there. Good job there being on guard by the Tiger defense. There's a lot of guys, five guys actually for Coach Holly that play both ways and come across and try to make the stop, trying to make a stop here and a big pickup by Andre Davis. Andre Davis is used to gaining those big yards, brought down by Brandon Wilson. We talked about Dominique Booker and his 11.2 yard average. 